Okay, boomers. Here we go. Welcome back, everybody. This is the uh, part three video of uh, the quest for the Holy Grail, or in Holy Grail, which is um, Ty Tabor. Ty Tabor? Ty Tabor, sorry. I keep calling him Tabor. Ty Tabor's uh, early rig tone or early tone from like the first four records from King's X. And uh, if you haven't been playing along at home, there's basically four pieces to the puzzle. Um, he's got two rack. Uh, pieces of rack gear. He's got the uh, Ibanez Double D 200 Delay. He's got the Alesis Midi Verb 2. And then part three is he uses a 1980s Fender Elite Stratocaster, which has, uh, I believe, active treble in middle boost. We examine these mysteries to determine, are they bullshit or not? So... The uh, first two videos, uh, we did what uh, normal people would do and just go out and bought the gear that we needed. Um, but that's not really what this channel's all about. We like to build shit and fix shit. So instead of buying a Fender Elite Stratocaster, I did a little research on the interweb. And if you go here, 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 um, the gentleman uh, that wrote this here, he liked uh, Eric Clapton's um, Fender Elite tone, and so he... Uh, did himself a little uh, redneck engineering, and he uh, got a uh, acoustic guitar piezo preamp and jammed it into a Stratocaster. Whoa. So that's what we're going to try and do. So up here on the bench is my... Uh, can you read that? It's upside down. Uh, my SX Custom Handmade VTG Series uh, Stratocaster style guitar. Actually, this neck was replaced. This is not the original neck. This guitar originally came with a rosewood neck, and I hated it because you just the rosewood, the uh, gaps in the rosewood uh, were not very nice for like bending and stuff, bending strings. This has a nice uh, clear lacquer neck, and um, in typical SX style, it's uh, it's all slippery. It's I don't know what lacquer they use, but it's the it's the good stuff. A bullshit team has unearthed spectacular new evidence which suggests that Jack the Ripper was in fact the Loch Ness Monster. Anywho, uh, yeah, so we got ourselves a uh, acoustic piezo little thingy here. We're going to tear this sucker apart and see if we can't jam it in there and hook it up and uh, make it work. So, uh, yeah. That sounds interesting to you, and I'm not sure why it would, but if it does, if it does, hang tight, here we go. All right, first things first, though. Um, when I replaced this neck, it didn't have a nut on it, and also the uh, skunk strip was peeling, was pushed out here. It, was, it came loose and was pushed out. So the repair for this down here at this end, it was starting to come apart, even though it's not focused. Um, filled it with some super glue and then uh, clamped it down with a couple of pieces of wood and a C-clamp. And uh, yeah, she's all back to normal. That's all working good. And then a little wet, dry sandpaper there. And uh, yeah, you'd never know. But anyway, um, when I replaced the nut... Um, super glue only seems to dry quickly when you're, uh, installing guitar nuts. Bullshit or not? So it's a little cattywampus, but anyway, I had to cut it and I uh, used the, uh, hold on, use cheap tool, hold on. Okay, so when I cut the slots for the nut on here, I, uh, took the cheap way out and I bought these very inexpensive nut slot cutting tools and... If anyone's ever used these, you know how that went. Um, especially on like the thinner strings, the high E and the B string. With these really tiny so-called files. That's like a lesson in futility. So what ended up happening was, um, uh, it appears, I did this a long, long time ago, but it appears that I just gave up and these slots were a little bit high. And so playing the cowboy chords especially down here, was uncomfortable. So I did buy a, uh, right here, 10,000 nut saw. 
and uh, it works a hell of a lot better than those little shitty files do when I uh, got a little bit overzealous when I tried to make that a little bit lower. And uh, now it sounds like uh, Mother's Little Helper. So, I really do not want to cut, put it, install a new nut and cut new slots for all the strings. So, uh, put a little super glue in there the other day and hopefully that'll be good enough for now because, uh, yeah, we, that's not what we want to be doing today. This is what we want to be doing today. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to check all the, uh, all the frets on the fretboard before I replace the strings because, uh, I just replaced the strings on the Telecaster and found out that the, uh, 18th fret uh, is completely dead uh, because it's hitting the strings hitting the 19th fret. So, uh, you know, it would have been nice to know that before I replaced the strings because I would have addressed that. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, normal setup stuff. And then uh, let me do that and then we'll get on to the, uh, the fun stuff here. Yep, so of course this happened. But uh, I think the super glue temporary fix is good enough. She's not sounding like a cigar anymore. So uh, that'll do for now. And then uh, on a string change in the future, we'll replace the nut. But uh, all right, let's see. Uh, let's see how this is gonna go. Oh yeah, I also checked the neck relief, and it, the uh, truss rod needs a little crank. But uh, um, hmm, yeah, not a great design. All right, we got the strings off, we got all the screws out. And uh, as you can see, the previous owner, uh, he said that he used this guitar as an experiment on uh, trying to do some relicking. I don't know, you tell me, I think it looks completely natural. Is it possible that Nessie murdered five streetwalkers before returning to Loch Ness? Did a good job there. Uh, anywho, I don't know if you can see that, this used to be mint green. But, uh, anywho, let's see how horribly the, uh, Tone Priest wired these pickups. Ooh, not a complete mess. I mean, they don't, they don't work right. Got some shielding. Um, anywho. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to, uh, fit all the crap in here that we need to. I don't know. Might be tight. Because we gotta get a battery, and then we gotta get, you know, some kind of circuit board in there. Um, if necessary, we can, uh, rebuild the circuit, but I was hoping not to, uh, rebuild the wheel from scratch, but, uh, all right, this is what we got to work with, this is the space we have, and, uh, I don't know, maybe we got some space in the back here, uh, definitely not, okay, so, uh, all right. Let's uh, make a mess. Let's uh, tear this sucker apart and see what we uh, what we're dealing with. Look at this truss rod adjustment. You know, even you know, you got to take the pick guard off, which you can't do if the strings are on. But even if you do that, you can't get in there without taking the friggin' neck off. That's just ridiculous. It's a good thing I like this neck. Here we are. It's a 530 seconds uh, Allen wrench, which uh, makes sense because it was made in friggin' China. Because you know they love Imperial over there. But anyway, um, it was barely engaged. The uh, relief was a little high, um, so we're just guessing. I gave it like a quarter turn, and uh, we'll hope for the best. Because the only way to... Uh, do this is to uh, bolt everything back down together, restring the guitar, tune it up, check your relief, and then if it's not right, you got to unstring it. Hope you don't break the E string. And blah blah blah. Yeah, just horrible design. What were you guys thinking? You know, geez. Um. Anywho, moving on. Here's a shot of the uh, relicking done to the back of the guitar. Again, looks very natural. Uh, that is, if the player of this guitar was wearing a 60 grit leather vest all the time. But, uh, anyway. Alright, here we are. Oh, I gotta sneeze. I think spring has sprung. A little allergy action going on. 
All right, so here is our EQ 505R acoustic guitar piezo pickup preamplifier EQ volume thingy, 9 volt battery thingy. Uh, got this on Amazon. It was on sale for $3.99, so uh, good deal there. Bam. Here's your piezo pickup. Uh, all right, how are we going to take this apart? So the, uh, the plan is to uh, not use sliders, or basically all we want is the circuit board out of this thing. Let's see how that works. Um, and the sliders will be, uh, instead of using the sliders, we'll go to the tone knobs on the Stratomacaster. But uh, before all that, we got to get this thing apart. Let's see here. And uh, hopefully we can get this to work. Uh, spoiler alert, if uh, you're watching this video, it did work. Alright, there's that. Uh, how do you come out? Oh, oh sorry. Uh, how is this thing secured in here? Oh, is this thing glued in there? Probably glued. All right, so this is about to get ugly, so I'm gonna have to shut you off so you don't have to see all the carnage. Hang tight. Okay, so I got this piece off here, and I had to uh, remove the uh, volume knob and the little slider caps. Basically, I just got medieval on this thing and uh, cut the four posts. And it looks like uh, this box was screwed in. Those posts, I don't know. I just got medieval on it. So this is where we're at. And now we got some uh, screws accessible to us. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, get the circuit board out of here without uh, continuing the uh, medieval uh, torture to it. But uh, there's a circuit board. We're getting there. Okie doke, that was a lot easier. It was just... Uh, Three teeny tiny, the tiniest little screws I think I've ever seen. Can you see that? Because I can't. Uh, and I just got those out with my uh, iFixit style kit. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. Bring you iFixit by the makers of iFixit. And here we are. So before we do any more disassembly, uh, I'm going to try and figure out how it works. So I'll take some measurements on these uh, sliders. And on the volume pot, and um, take it from there. All right, next step, we need to extricate these sliders. So we're going to uh, use our solder sucker and a hot soldering iron to hopefully uh, do that. So here we go. Uh oh, Got a big blob inside the solder sucker. Get out of there. It's filthy. Oops. She wasn't loaded. Being a pain. What? Oh, okay, we got it. We got it. There we go. One down. Uh, it does say it's a. Can you read that? I don't know. I can't really see the viewfinder. Uh, linear 50k pot. Uh, I did measure it in circuit, so let's measure it out of the circuit and see what we get now.
yeah, 50K. So there the, uh, the reading was off because it was in circuit. So, uh, all right, new information. We're trying a new thing around here. We're trying to do uh, accurate information. Although this is a bullshit reenactment, it may have happened just this way. Hello, dearie, show you a good time for a quid. So uh, this guy here was uh, the treble uh, slider, so 50K. All right, let me get these other two out. Okay, all the sliders are out. They're all 50K linear. All right, now we just need to get this uh, volume pot out. Hopefully it won't be too much trouble. You see that? Here we go. Uh, yeah, it's going to be trouble. Everything's so tiny on here. Yeesh. All right. Okie doke. The pot's out. The pot's out. Uh, here's the board. Hopefully it's in focus. I'll leave the L uh, LED for now. Who knows? Maybe it'll come in handy. Uh, I'm going to clean that up with a little bit of alcohol. And the volume pot accurate measurement is... Uh, looks to be a 20K. Yeah. You can see for yourself. Hopefully. Probably not. Might have to take my word for it. 18.8K, so we're going to call that a 20. All right, moving on. Shit's about to get real. Oh, we're upside down. I'll have to fix this in post. Well, we can fix that in post, too. Look, don't underestimate post-production magic, Chip. Anywho, here we are. Uh, moving right along, we got the... Uh, all the old crap disassembled. We got the knobs out because those all need to be replaced with different values. Uh, got the pickups all unassembled except for the switch. Got the three wires going to the three posts that we want to on the switch. And then uh, our input jack and some grounding crap and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so. Um, I think. I think we should be okay here. So, we should be going, we have our three pickups, right, going to the uh, proper lugs, and then from the common, we're going to go to the preamp in, which is what I believe is what the piezo um, pickup plugged into, that thing there. And then everything else, we'll take the uh, wires that come from, where's our gizmo? These wires here, we'll install a uh, grounding jack. And we'll just, uh, yeah, connect those wires to our grounding jack. And uh, I believe that's to um, shut the battery off when it's unplugged. But this does have an on-off switch, so hmm, maybe we'll just jump that. So it'll always be on until it's off. I don't know. We'll get there when we get there. We'll figure it out. Um, but other than that, then we need to uh, wire up our, our knobs. And the way this uh, gentleman did it is uh, because he only wanted to use, he didn't want to cut any new holes and add a, a third pot. Um, he wired up the, looks like the base and the mid, or the, uh, the mid and the treble, to a dual gang pot. So if you turned it one way, you'd get uh, treble boost. If you turned it the opposite way, you'd get uh, whatever, the other one boost. Um... We are interested in treble and mid boost, or I don't know. Maybe if we have room, we'll add a third uh, control. Yeah, we might have room to do that. That way, we'll have mid, treble, and bass boost. I don't know. I need to think about that. But uh, yeah, it seems to be. I don't see any trouble ahead, but uh, I never do. And it happens anyway. So uh, that's where we're at. Okay, on our piezo pickup input thingy here, the tip is the hot, 
and then the sleeve is the ground which is has continuity with the uh, braided shield here and so for our input thingy here we want to go to that inner one where the uh, arrow is that is where our hots need to be connected to our pickups apparently uh, we shall see so I'm gonna break out the solder sucker again and we'll remove this thing and uh, yeah go to step 19 okay a little update here so we uh, connected the the jack input from the circuit board uh, we took off their supply jack and uh, we wired up our jack here it's a grounding jack and then uh, hot to hot uh, the black wire to the uh, grounding lug and then the ground uh, just the uh, outside shield wire to uh, the ground as you do or hopefully that as we do but uh yeah it's nice and small this should probably fit down here nicely the other problem is uh, getting access to the battery. Uh, we're going to have to find a place for that. Maybe we'll um, hog out some stuff on the other side and we'll put a battery box over here at some point if this works. Or the other option I was thinking of is maybe finding a um, like a small lithium-ion 9-volt battery and uh, putting a little, uh, like one of them circle ones you see for watches or whatever, and uh, putting it in the... Um, the tremolo spring cavity on the back. But uh, one thing at a time, we gotta see if this thing's even gonna work. So, uh, uh, yeah, step 28 coming up next. All right, we got all our pots pre wired, ready to be inserted into the little circuit board. And I gotta say, I really gotta teach the tone on how to do this right here, because this is tedious as hell. I beg your pardon, what did you say? This is only four pots. Uh, you can imagine doing like an effects pedal with like six pots or more. Yikes. But uh, anyway, moving on. God almighty, has this been a nightmare. All right, I think we have it working. Um, for the longest time, I, it just would not work no matter what I tried. Uh, did some measurements and I was getting negative seven volts from the red lead to ground. Uh, so I figured, you know, that can't be good. So I swapped this thing around. So it's in there backwards, the little white connector there. So we're getting positive seven volts. Uh, and of course we had to uh, desolder this uh, LED and put it in reverse so that it would work and it would let current through and blah, blah, blah. Yikes, what a nightmare. But it appears to be working, proof of concept anyway. Uh, appears to be making noise. I'll put it that way. So um, I'll unproof of concept this and put it in a semi-permanent state, or at least a usable state. Um, throw some strings on and see what we got. So uh, hang tight. You definitely don't want to miss that. We'll see you right after these messages. <laughs> Young lovers of any age will cherish this timeless collection of the world's most romantic ballads. And if you act now, you'll get free this bonus album, Don Simmons, Down and Punky. Jeremiah was a bullfrog, was a good friend of mine. Never understood a single word he said This two-record collection is not available in any stores, so order now. Yes, he always had some mighty fine wine. All right, I think we're making progress here. Got all the knobs in. When I first jammed this into the cavity, it put a couple screws in, it stopped working. Pulled it all apart again, and one of the surface mount capacitors popped off and took pads with it you can see that so I had to go in and figure out where I could put in a uh, electrolytic capacitor that I had I don't know where is it yeah this guy here with the green wire yeah you know, had to uh, put that sucker in put the uh, circuit board up to a light and find the traces to see where it went from and to and all that blah 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 all right good was sort of working again, put it all back together, it stopped working. It's like, what the hell, Gus? 
tore it all apart. The LED wouldn't turn back on again when you press that button. I don't know what that button does. I think that might just be a battery checker. But, uh, because it, uh, when it does work, it works regardless if you press the button or not. And the LED only stays on while you're actually pressing the, uh, momentary button. But anyway, LED wasn't working. I was about to give up on this thing like 16 times, but, uh, LED wasn't working. Tested voltages, and then we're at negative voltage again. It's like, what the crap, Gus? So, I, uh, just for, uh, shits and giggles, I, uh, Pop the LED out, reverse it again to the way it was, put the socket back in the, the proper way, the way it's supposed to be, and voila, now everything's working better than it ever has before. Who the hell knows? This should have been easy, but like I said, I was about to give up on this thing in about three or four different points in this project. It should have been very simple, but I did not, and uh... Never give up, never surrender. Whew. Hang on there, baby. We'll get you running. All right, in case it doesn't work after I get the strings on, I just want to uh, document this for uh, to prove that we climbed Everest. Um, yeah. It's got some fucking gain, I'll tell you that much. Mid, and for whatever reason, the friggin' bass is backwards, but whatever. And, um, yeah, that's got some gain. That's going into the, uh, Boss Katana under my, uh, bench here. And that's in the, uh, whatever it is, the 5-watt mode, the low mode. This is, uh, yeah, this has got some serious boost on it right now, that's for sh damn sure. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna hook it up with the, uh, battery box just kind of dangling probably duct tape it to the back of the body just to uh, prove the concept and uh well let's not get ahead of ourselves let's throw some strings on here and uh see what we got well what do you know it works uh still got the battery box kind of dangling where's that reminder of um but again, this is proof of concept. Uh, there is no using your guitar if you don't have the battery hooked up. So I think, um, you know, it's a kind of switching mechanism. The switch between uh, battery operated and then regular mode would be a good thing to have. But there you go. So I'm going straight into my Boss Katana that's under the bench. Uh, the speaker's pointed towards... A bunch of junk so not the uh not gonna be the best sound recording but uh after this project i'm kind of uh winded and uh well we'll do the best we can anywho uh we're in the bridge uh position pickup i got uh treble made and bass all at five so it should be like uh even Blackface uh, Fender amplifier in a knob. Super scooped. All right, this is with everything cranked.
Okay, so I uh, plugged the guitar into the Basic Man amp here. The Boss Katana is great and all, but uh, it definitely has a peculiar sound, and uh, I think mine's been on the Fritz ever since I cranked it up to 10 and uh, blasted it with an EP booster, but uh, it's got some kind of weird uh, weird sound in the uh, upper mid-range area, so uh, just wanted to be sure, and uh, so we plug it into the Basic Man amp. <laughs> Sounds a little more natural in this amp right here. Okay, that's with the EQ cranked up uh, all the way on everything. So I roll back to the mid a little bit. got that that little weird special thing in the upper area there that little squeaky squealy that you hear in uh, the King's X tone um, so yeah I think this will probably uh, this puzzle piece right here will fit for our purposes here chasing the Holy Grail honestly yeah, I think they just sound like active pickups with an EQ so oh my you are a big one now aren't you Come on, darling. Oh. Who knew? But they definitely have a lot of boost. Uh, this is on one. It's about as loud as where it usually would be on three, which is usually pretty freaking loud. I imagine the phone's distorting already. how we uh how this puzzle piece is gonna fit <laughs> successfully uh did this project and um yeah just sounds like uh active pickups with uh eq for the most part but i guess if you don't want to spend a bunch of money on a set of active pickups you can uh, go through a whole bunch of trouble and have a hanging dangler on your guitar but uh definitely um i like the way it sounds but uh i wouldn't want this to be my only guitar it definitely has a peculiar sound and it's probably not right for everybody. 
but it does sound pretty cool. Um, definitely got a heck of a lot more gain or output from the jack here. And you got the EQ, and uh, it makes the strings feel electrified or like they're super fat and full of electricity, um, if that's any kind of analogy. So I think we'll figure out a plan for what to do about the battery. Maybe we'll uh, hog out something right here to put a little battery uh, compartment. And then uh, we'll go back in here and we'll, uh, you know, we just need to do, uh, take out a little bit of wood in here to make this fit better. You know, because the circuit board's kind of all kitty cornered in there and it's just, you know, tiny little bit with the Dremel tool or a little bit of routing will make that fit really nice in there. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to call this a success. All right, with that being said, we definitely have uh, at least one more part for this quest for the Holy Grail, and that's uh, what we're going to do about the L5 amplifier, the Lab Series L5. And um, it's probably going to take a little bit because it's uh, kind of a big project. So uh, look something to look forward to, and uh, hopefully we'll see you when that happens. Until then... Rock on dudes and dudettes. Mind you, don't you be stepping on my feet now. Ooh. Aren't you in an hurry? Now will you be careful? Not so rough. To Wait a minute. <laughs> Is this the way it happened? Was Jack the Ripper, in fact, a 60-foot sea serpent from Scotland? Did I take this job for a quick buck? We may never know the answer to these questions. Next week. Done.